Welcome to the video lecture on the play Nahamandala written by Girish Karnad. Girish Karnad was an Indian actor, film director, Kannada writer and a Nanpith awardee. He predominantly worked in Kannada, Hindi, Tamil, Telugu, Malayalam and Marathi films. His rise as a playwright in the 1960s marked the coming of age of modern Indian playwriting. For four decades, Karnad composed plays often using history and mythology to tackle contemporary issues. He translated his plays into English and received acclaim. His notable plays Tughlaq This historical play is about the 14th century Sultan Muhammad bin Tughlaq. Hayavadana, one of the first modern Indian plays to employ traditional theatrical techniques. Nagamandala, Karnad turns to oral tales usually narrated by women in this play. Yayati, a play that explores the theme of responsibility and roles in society. The Fire and the Rain, this play was adapted into a film title Agni Varsha. Benda Kalu on Toast, a play that provides a glimpse into the rapidly changing social landscape of Bangalore. Karnat's plays are known for their use of history and mythology to address contemporary issues. His contributions to literature and theatre earned him the Nyanpith Award, India's highest literary prize. He was also conferred the Bhatmashri and Bhatmabhushan by the Government of India. Characters in the play Nahamandala Rani, she is the protagonist of the play, she is a young bride who is neglected by her indifferent and unfaithful husband Appanna. Appanna is Rani's husband who spends most of his time with his concubine. Naga, a cobra who can assume the form of a human being. In the play, Naha takes on the form of Appanna. Gurutva, a blind woman who gives Rani a root to mix with milk in an attempt to win over Appanna. Kappanna, Gurutva's son. Selvi, a prostitute whom Appanna visits. Folklore and Mythology Girish Karnas Nahamandala is a brilliant example of how folklore and mythology can be woven into contemporary narratives. Karnad uses folk tales and myths attributing divine qualities to humans and non-humans. The play is inspired by snake myths prevalent in South India. The use of magic and exceptional ordeals is a common feature in the play. The power of the demigod Naga who can transform into a human form is a key element. The use of flames and story as well as the man or the narrator or symbolic elements drawn from traditional storytelling. Myth is used to reinstate the socio-religious structure and order in society. This is evident in the portrayal of societal norms and expectations in the play. The play probes into the male and female growth into selfhood and their mature adjustment with the social roles appointed for them by the traditional society. The magical roots and Rani who attains divinity near the end of the play are examples of how Karnad uses mythology to elevate his characters. The plot of the play Nahamandala. The story begins with Rani, a young woman who finds herself in an unhappy marriage to a man named Appanna. Appanna is a neglectful husband who spends most of his time away from home, often in the company of a concubine. Rani's attempts to communicate with Appanna are consistently met with indifference. An old blind woman named Gurutva arrives with her son Kappanna. Gurutva sympathizes with Rani's situation and provides her with two magical roots, believing that these roots have the power to rekindle Appanna's love for his wife. Rani uses the smaller root first, mixing it with milk and offering it to Appanna, but it fails to have any effect. Rani then uses the larger root, mixing it into curry. However, she disposes of the curry outside the house on an anthill, unknowingly inhabited by a king cobra, Naga. 
Naga, who can take the form of your human, is enchanted with Rani and begins to visit her every night in the guise of her husband. This changes Rani's life completely as she starts to experience the good things in life, though she never knows that the person with her is not her husband but the Naga. Nahamandala ends on a dramatic note. The ordeal. When Rani informs Appanna about her pregnancy, he accuses her of infidelity and takes her to the village council. To, pr to prove her innocence, Rani is asked to undergo an ordeal. She is asked to put her hand in the anthill and take out the snake. If the snake bites her, she would be gu guilty. But if it doesn't, she would be innocent. The Naga, in the form of a small serpent, comes out of the anthill and coils around Rani's neck like a garland, thus proving her innocence. Appanna realizes his mistake and accepts Rani along with the child she is carrying. In the original ending proposed by the storyteller, the Naga sacrifices himself. He turns into a small serpent and gets into Rani's beautiful long dresses where he dies. While combing Rani's hair, the dead serpent falls out. The happy ending, however, the listener of the story is not satisfied with the sad ending and provides a happy ending himself. In this version, when Rani combs her hair, the alive Naga falls out. Appanna tries to kill it, but Rani hides it back in her hair. Here the play ends. Thanks for watching.